you probably be very interested to understand and to discover why certain people they are training really hard, they eat really well, they rest really well, but they don't get the gains as much as somebody who do not do as much as them. What happened? Sometimes we call that genetics. Okay. So if you want to understand genetics means things that is not modifiable, we need to look at factors affecting strength. So there are six factors which affect somebody's strength and you cannot modify them. The very first component, I would say this is the most powerful one, is hormones. If you are born with higher levels of growth hormone, testosterone, IGF-1, we call it insulin growth factor 1, if you have higher levels of that, that will certainly contribute to bigger muscle mass. You cannot change that. Yes, I know you can think that as a steroid injection, but that's not natural and that's illegal. Number two, age. As we pass age 25, our anabolic hormones, I mean our hormones tend to decline. When, especially when you're inactive. When these hormones decline, you will find that it is harder for us to build muscle mass as much as when you were younger. That's also one of the reasons why you see most Olympic athletes will retire around mid 20s. Number three, gender. Physically, not emotionally. Physically, male are stronger than female. Why? Because male generally have higher level of testosterone compared to female. With higher level of testosterone, you have a greater opportunity to build muscle mass. Point number four, muscle fiber type. We have two types of muscle fiber. Type one, type two. Type one, we call it a slow twitch. Type two, we call it a fast twitch. If you are born with greater composition or distribution of type one muscle fiber, the slow twitch, you will probably be better suited in endurance activity. If you are born with more distribution or greater distribution of type two muscle fiber, the fast twitch, you probably be better suited in power and strength activities. So, how do you know? There's always a question. How do you know if you have more type 1 or more type 2? You don't really need to find out because it hurts to find out. You need to do this thing called muscle biopsy. And I don't think you, you, know, you want to find every single muscle fiber in your body because you have to extract the cell out from your body. So, nobody actually does that. I would say that if you normally go by trial and error, you will see that if you are more uh, conditioned for power and strength, then maybe you have no conversation of type 2. Don't blame, the only person you need to be is your parents. Number 5, deep length. So there's always the myth, okay, there's always a myth, but probably you've heard the story that uh, parents usually do not allow their kids to do weight training when they're young. And the reason is because they, when you look at videos and look at documentary shows of great, great weight lifters in the world, realize that they are slightly shorter or I call it particularly challenged. Now, is it because through training, the weights push their height down? Or is it because of other reasons? Now, let me tell you, usually when somebody is shorter, I would prefer to use the word, when your lead length is shorter, you have a biomechanical advantage. Why? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. If I'm doing a curl this way, okay, right? Versus if I have a longer forearm. Can you imagine doing that with a longer forearm? Which one you will think it is harder? Of course, if you have a longer forearm, it takes more effort for your bicep to lift the weights. So that means limb length does a flex strength. If you have a shorter limb length, you normally be at an advantage. That is why world class weightlifters they are generally shorter on the line, not because the weight presses them down. So we cut the things. What do we do? Alright, next, that is the session. Now, let me help you to understand this a little bit complicated. So if you look at this, this is by my drawing. So if you look at this as an example of bicep curl. Okay, so that's your bicep. That's the number you're lifting, and that's the elbow. Okay, so let's look at this. In order for you to lift this number up, so let's say this number is 5 kilos. So you look at it, this 
number of five kilos. In order for me to lift the number up, my muscle, my muscle force, right? my muscle force should be greater than my resistance. You agree with that? Right, but I'm going to bring this to the next level. Now, we, we don't really use this terminology because it's more than that. The actual resistance that you are lifting, the actual resistance that you are lifting, is not just 5 kilos. It is 5 kilos multiplied by the length of the lever. Means the distance between the point of rotation, it's for bicep curl, it will be an elbow. The distance between the elbow to the place where the weights are. So 5 kilos times the length of the lever. That is why when you have, like I mentioned earlier on the length, that is why if you have a longer forearm, your resisting top, use the word resistive top, will be greater. Not because of just the weight, but the weight will multiply by the length. So that's on the resistant part. That's for the muscle. So you are the muscle. Generally, you want to exert less force. Why? Because if you exert less force and you still can lift the same weight with less force, that's what you want. So you're stronger. So what, what it takes, right, to calculate your muscular torque is that you have to calculate how much force, muscle force, see this here, muscle force multiplied by the leg. What leg? Is the length between your elbow, the point of rotation, and to the point where the tendon sits. Think for a little while. You want to be able to lift the dumbbell up. That means you want to have a bigger muscular torque. You want to have a bigger muscular torque. So you want these numbers to grow. So if you want to exert that spot because you want to for you, that also means a person where the tendency is D will be at the advantage compared to this person tendon insert at D. Why? Because this is the length here. Right? So can you imagine? So let's say if this length is good, just a general number, if this length is 30, so this will give you 150. So that means I need a bigger Muscular top bigger than 150 to be able to lift this number up. So I need 150 here. So let's say the person's tendon D, let's say let's use let's use uh, say 20, 20 and then A with 10. And what is 10? It's the distance between the point of rotation to where the tendon sits. So if I compare a person with 20, you will need lower muscle force. A person with A, which is only 